everyone welcome to another episode of ask tanya we are on episode three and i'm so excited thank you all for the questions you guys have been responding so well to this new series here on the curly chemistry channel so thank you for your participation i'm sure a lot of this information has been helpful to you guys so far and i'm excited to continue to give you guys more value via this ask tanya segment okay so we have some new questions the first one is from miss doris doris says hi tanya thank you for this i noticed balding spots after i had suffered with severe flaking dandruff that I had never been bothered with before. I thought maybe the balding came from dandruff or me scratching it. What do you think and what can I do? Please and thank you. All right, hi Miss Doris, thank you for your question. So a few things come to my mind. Um, so typically dandruff wouldn't lead to bald spots. However, when you were scratching and itching, there is a possibility of damage to the hair follicle. So if there is some damage going on there that could lead to inflammation and that can disrupt the hair growth cycle leading to the antigen phase going to the talogen phase, which is the shedding phase where your hair starts to legit come out of your scalp. It's just this, this, you know, balding in a sense. I don't know if you went to a dermatologist or a trichologist to confirm what it was, but it could have been something outside of dandruff that led to the balding that you're experiencing. Now, as far as what you can do, the biggest thing I would say is if you haven't already incorporated some ACV rinses, if you are still experiencing the dandruff, I would definitely do that. The second thing I would do, if this becomes a persistent thing, definitely go see a dermatologist or a trichologist just to get a closer look at what's going on. And then as far as like getting that hair grow going back in that area, you can do um, caffeine tonic, like create like coffee as you normally would. Caffeine also helps to stimulate blood flow to the scalp to help to support hair growth, especially in that balding area that you are experiencing. Um, try that out, like legit. Take some instant coffee with some water, let that cool and massage it on that balding spot for at least 30 days. Take before and after photos and let me know how that works. Okay, the next question is from Precious. And Precious says, should we be doing anything to our scalp to maintain health? Does oiling your scalp have negative effects? I love your question, Precious. Thank you for submitting your question. So in regards to like maintaining scalp health, what we should be doing, the biggest thing I would say is avoiding product buildup. Um, that's going to be a big one, especially for us because we deal with a lot of hair texture, well, a different, okay. We deal with a lot of products that have different textures. You know, we have butters, we have creams, we have edge controls, we got gels, all these things. They're not bad, but left on the scalp too long can cause some scalp issues. So the biggest thing here is making sure that you are washing your hair frequently. Now, not too frequent because that's only to dry itchy scalp. So it's like you gotta find that balance. I also recommend doing exfoliation as well, like getting a nice exfoliating shampoo, you know, brush. Uh, the one I recommend is the Pacifica Scalp Massager brush that one i love it does a great job at removing dead skin cells and also product buildup and then also it's okay to do some type of like clarifying treatment at least once a month or once every other month i like acv it's very gentle it makes my curls pop but it also cleanses my scalp tremendously and it also helps to maintain the ph of the scalp so i recommend doing that other question you had does oiling your scalp have a negative effect it doesn't. However, if you have like dandruff, like some severe dandruff, you don't want to really be oiling your scalp. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of that oil and the mixture of the dead skin cells already on the scalp is causing that yeast to feast on the dandruff. So you don't want that. Um, but if you don't have dandruff and you have like a normal to dry scalp or just a normal scalp, all in your scalp is completely fine. You don't need a ton. A little bit goes a long way. You can do this maybe three or four times a week just to maintain a moisturized scalp to reduce dryness and itchiness. Okay, the next question is from Ms. Umu. Umu says, what can I use to make my hair thicker on the crown section? I'm still battling with alopecia. My hair is 4C slash B and thin. Okay, so, ooh. A number of things come to mind. The first thing I would say is, number one, your styles. Make sure that you are not having any tight, traumatizing styles in that section because no matter what you do, 
okay? No matter what you do, no matter how much advice I give you, if you have some tight styles and trauma going on, you, you're not going to see the results of thickness that you're looking for. So that's the first thing. Make sure you opt for low maintenance, non-tight styles. That's number one. Number two, I would get on a good multivitamin that has iron, vitamin D, you know, just really make sure that you are getting your nutrients in. Make sure you have a balanced diet. A lot of alopecia is caused from inflammation and you will be surprised how alopecia can clear up and just multiple things within the body can become more balanced and regulated just by changing your diet. And then on the flip side, when it comes to what you can do topically, uh, you can get your hands on some castor oil with a few drops of peppermint oil. You can also incorporate pumpkin seed oil. These are very nourishing oils to help to regulate hair growth, but also impart thicker hair as well. Okay, the next question is from Miss Betty. Miss Betty says, my hair takes a long time to get wet or absorb most products. So for that reason, I thought my hair is low porosity, but when my hair dries, it will take only 30 minutes to an hour to get dry. So my question is, what type of products will be good for my hair type? So Betty, it sounds like you may be in between low and high porosity, which is very tricky because your hair takes a long time to get wet, which is typically a sign of low porosity, but it's drying really fast, you know? so. It could be where you have that mixture where certain parts of your hair are low and other parts are high porosity, or it could be like you really are high porosity hair and you just happen to absorb water a little bit slower than most people who have high porosity. So in regards to your question, you can kind of play around with the products that you can use. Um, the first thing that does come to my mind for you is gel cream products. So gel creams are like a mixture between liquids and creams. It's like right in that middle where you're getting all that dynamic moisture that absorbs easily into the hair because like I said, it's like a gel-like consistency, but you're also get, getting that occlusive and that substantivity from that creaminess. So the two products that come to my mind for you when it comes to moisturizers because shampoos and deep conditioners you can pretty much you know use anything you want or what's currently working for you if you're looking for products like that check out my holy grail videos i have tons that i recommend there but as for moisturizers go i would look into the aussie moist miracle curls leave-in conditioner that is like the perfect example of a gel cream texture that'll be really good for you to use and also make sure you are sealing in that moisture like don't just put a cream or a liquid moisturizer in and go about your day always follow up if your hair is thicker you may want to try a little bit of hair grease or a thicker oil like avocado or um or, or olive oil for example the next product i recommend is the is the lush revive hair cream that one is really really good okay the next question is from miss becca and becca says hi should i avoid scalp oiling if i have dry and itchy scalp i experienced hair loss from the dry scalp and flaking and i'm trying to grow back the bald patches so usually if it's just dry itchiness the oil will actually be a benefit for you however i always recommend incorporating like a, like a serum first so based off of you having a dry itchy scalp i would recommend either using the pacifica rosemary scalp serum which you can find at ulta or the pattern scalp serum both of these formulas are very hydrating for the scalp uh, they also both contain peppermint or menthol, I want to say, which is also great for soothing an itchy scalp. So I would recommend those two products. And then to help seal in that moisture, you can also use a light oil like grapeseed or jojoba on top of that. So you know how we moisturize our hair, like, you know, a cream based moisturizer followed by an oil. The same thing can also apply to a dry itchy scalp apply a water-based serum on your scalp and then a light amount of oil to massage that in that's going to help tremendously to reduce your dry itchy scalp okay the last question is from miss deanna and deanna says what is the best shampoo conditioner and stylers that are gentle for kids or and up thanks so i love your question deanna um i recommend aubrey baby goodies i might be biased because she is a client of mine but she makes some amazing products for babies 
toddlers for the kiddos and her products are high quality like you're going to see performance and results and they're going to be very gentle for your child's hair so i would recommend her brand aubrey baby goodies i'll put it below so you can check her out Yo, all right guys we've enjoyed this third episode of ask tanya once again if you would like to get your question answered in an upcoming ask tanya episode i'll post the link below for you to go ahead and submit your question and once your question is answered you will get an email from me letting you know in advance the date and time that your question will be answered in an ask tanya episode okay i do have a question for you what is one thing that you gained from this video. What's something that you've learned that you wanna take with you? Comment below and let me know. If you wanna learn more about your hair, ingredients from a cosmetic chemist perspective, definitely check out these amazing curly chemistry resources for you. I created these resources with your curls in mind, tons of solutions, tons of things to help you get your hair back on track. And if you would like some assistance and wanna book a call with me one-on-one, -on -one, we can create a tailor-made customized plan just for you, whether you are experiencing breakage, dryness, hair loss, whatever it is, we will create solutions just for you to get your hair growth goals going, okay? And once again, if you're interested in starting a hair care line, no matter where you are in the world, you work with me one-on-one. -on -one. I have a link below for you as well. All right, guys, I love you. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.